For those of you who don't know me, I'm Seth Cooper, Burke's older brother. The Kumbaya. Being Burke's older brother, I've known him for his entire life. Going back through his life, Burke's always had these grand plans, different business ventures, career paths, destinations of travel, great ideas that he's came up with. These ideas usually don't get much farther than the developmental phase. As my dad has said, Burke's so good at marketing because his mind's very free-flowing, he's got a great imagination, and he's really able to think outside the box. Burke recently told my mom that if our family knew his entire, of all of his different business ideas and overall plans, that they'd think he was more crazy than we already do. <laughs> so I guess I don't know all of his plans, but I do know a few throughout the years that I'd like to pass along. <laughs> Burke's first idea was to be a, grow up to be a professional magician. <laughs> career peaked at the Short Hills Talent Show. For his grand finale, he sawed Reed in half and then put him back together. With the help of Charlie McKenna's feet, he was able to pull his stunt off soon after he hung up his magic wand. Next came Burke's idea that he was going to start a boy band. activities passed, we would, they would leave and we would instantly go to the dining room table where the Cooper Christmas Poker Tournament would commence. <laughs> this tournament was, we'd use the quarters and winner take all between my brothers and I. And Nan and Gramps, again, sorry for using your quarters that way, Nan would always tell us how all year she'd steal all Gramps' change and all his quarters to give us the role, but we do really appreciate the quarters and Hope that they keep coming in the future. <laughs> so Burke was successful enough to win this very prestigious Cooper Christmas Poker Tournament. His next 
business adventure career path was to become a professional darts player. Again, Burke had a little. S he had a again like like poker. He had a little success with darts as this plaque will show. This is a plaque that Burke won for winning the Madison Downtown Bar Poker Tournament. Burke no. won six consecutive years of the Madison Downtown <laughs> Dark Tournament, and Monday's bar, which was Burke's home bar, still proudly displays six of his championship plaques on the wall. <laughs> Sadly, Burke had to retire from his dark career as he moved to Minneapolis, but I have first hand knowledge that he's still Dark skills are still superb, and I wouldn't suggest challenging him for anything more than fun, and I've, as I've seen way too many people pay off a wide variety of, vet, of bets throughout the years. So as Burke you know, likes games, and with the Olympics going on right now, Burke too was touched by the Olympic spirit. 2010, Winter Olympics in Vancouver. Burke came up, you know, through all these stories you've seen a theme, and Burke thought, kind of like the stories, that he too could be an Olympian. <laughs> so he started a blog, Burke Cooper Goes Curling. <laughs> but what is this blog entitled? I'm going to read you a couple passages. February 25th, 2010. Hello, world. Hello, everyone. Welcome to my blog dedicated to my journey to become an Olympic curler. February 26th, 2010. Road to Sochi. The other night, I was watching the Olympics with some friends, and out came the odd game of curling. We sat, drank, watched, discussed, and soon began making claims that we too, given enough time to train, could become Olympic curlers. Our sights, 2014 Olympics, Sochi, Russia. I decided soon after that I was not okay simply claiming that I could become a great curler. I sincerely want to give it a try. So here we are, my blog dedicated to my journey to become an Olympic curler. February 27, 2010. Burke's curling stats. Ice time, zero minutes. Money spent, two dollars. Shuffle puck at Mad Hatter's bar. Curling accomplishments. I started a blog. Skill level, to be determined. While well, unable to get out on the ice until after the national championships are over, Jesse Quinn and I went out and played a few rounds of shuffle puck to mentally prepare and get in the competitive spirit. Does that count as training? <laughs> February 28, 2010. On the ice, barely. While the curling gold med with the curling gold medal yet to be decided, I couldn't wait any longer. So I headed down to the ice rink to do a little sliding around. I don't earn a curling stone. But I figured since an Olympic stone weighs 42 pounds, I would just grab a 40 pound dumbbell. <laughs> yeah, that'll work. I also don't earn a curling burn to lean on while I slide, but whatever. An old hockey stick will do the trick, right? And of course, I don't own curling shoes. Yeah. But the obviously next best thing is soccer cleats. Duh. So there I was, standing at the edge of the hockey rink with a 40 pound dumbbell, a hockey stick, and soccer cleats. Do you think it worked? I mean, how could it? Let's be serious. I pushed off the first time and the dumbbell slid about three feet. I pushed harder, nothing. This was the point where a group of three ten-year-old girls started skating over to see what the strange guy in the corner was doing. Before they got close enough to form an opinion, I was off the ice, heading back to my car. I only wish I had a picture for you all to see. It was beyond comical. Theater of the absurd at its best. A for effort, F for execution. 
The national championships in Madison are now over. Time to stop monkeying around and get some proper instructions. Curling through life, Burke. <laughs> Different entries where he talks about wee curling, talks about actually going down to Milwaukee and actually getting in a curling match, which he says ends with future Olympians three, other guys two. <laughs> but we'll fast forward ahead to June 22nd, 2010. Asking me to curl without ice is like asking a bowler to practice with no ball. Sure, I can visualize all I want, but that ain't gonna do it. A curler needs ice. The St. Paul Curling Club, the nation's largest, opens in October. I'll give my quest serious thought prior to that point and make a decision. If you go online and search for Cooper Curling, you'll see that that's the last entry to the world. I have already have, have had visions of going over to Russia and cheering for a so a few months later I was really trying to inspire him and poke at him a little bit in an email exchange where I was telling him to get on the ice. Well, Bert responded with the following email. November 8th, 2012. I got a lot of dreams, Seth. All dreamers do. Some will be realized, others may not. The lengths that it would take to try and make Sochi reality would have killed too many others. Bert. I'd like to think that one of those dreams he was talking about is becoming a reality tonight. Yeah. Burke's next idea was to mass market this. Many of you are probably wondering what this is. Burke went to a concert one night and bought one of these to put on a beer bottle to allow you to shotgun or beer bomb a beer quickly. Well, Burke had a few of these that night and decided this was such a great idea that when he came back to Madison, he thought he'd sell them throughout the dorms. He got with Jesse Quinn and they went to the hardware store and assembled 200 bottle beer bongs to sell throughout the dorms. That next spring, I moved Burke out of the University of Wisconsin Towers and in a bag, there was 198 bottle beer bongs remaining. Bert managed to sell, or probably use with Jesse, the other two. <laughs> my next memory is with Burke studying abroad in London, and then myself going to meet him upon his completion of the program. Burke studied abroad across the street from Hyde Park in London his junior year of college. The University of Wisconsin program he was in had a flat. Burke was one of four guys in the flat, there was 20 girls in the flat, one of which Kristen was. Yeah. Upon hearing of this four guy to 20 girl ratio, my brother Cale bluntly stated, great odds. <laughs> Burke was enamored with Kristen from the beginning of the semester, but as you've heard, Kristen had a boyfriend back in the United States. Well, later on in the semester, Kristen broke up with her boyfriend, and that's when Burke and her started going on a couple dates, but it wasn't until the last week of the semester that they first went on their first date and then started hanging out. They said their goodbyes, and as some of you have heard, Kristen gave Burke two notes, one of which he couldn't read until he was flying home, the other one that he could open as soon as she left. Well, I flew over to Rome. Burke met me in Rome of when we were going to spend 17 days traveling around Europe. As we're there, we're catching up when I land, and Burke keeps telling me about this girl, Kristen, that he met. And on and on he's talking all these stories, Kristen, 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 Kristen. And I just thought it was nothing more than a little amusing crush, nothing serious. Well then, as we're traveling throughout Europe, we'd be on the Eurorail. Burke would pull out the note and read it. Keep reading this note. At the hostels in between activities, in Latin museums, over and over and over, he would read this note. So I started thinking that this was just ridiculous. So I'm like, Burke, this is absurd. Kristen's probably back in the U.S. with her ex-boyfriend. Like, there's nothing really going on here. He'd assure me that no, Kristen's great. And he told me in five years they were going to travel to Brazil together. Five years. I, mean, I, I was 
astounded. I have five years, man. You've only been dating for five days. Now, you're telling me you have a five-year plan? Well, Bert was convinced. And although they haven't been to Brazil yet, here we are a little over seven years later. And next week they are going to Hawaii. And I'm happy to say, as with all the stories and different ideas Burke has had, I'm glad that this is the idea that he saw all the way through to the finish. With that, along with our two brothers, we'd like to welcome Kristen into the Cooper family as our first sister. Being the first sister into the family, <laughs> Kayla and I have both talked, and, and Seth and, and all my parents are, are equally uh, excited to have Kristen join us. But if you know the Cooper family at all, right. oh, yeah. <laughs> you know we're into group hugs. Uh, our Christmas card a few years back was a big family group hug. So, with that, we couldn't be more excited to have Kristen join our family, and we're going to start it off with a Cooper group hug.
ਦਿਨ ਜਦ ਨਾ 